Hello, my name is Danny Nolan, and I'm the director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome again to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. In this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, I'm going to be talking to you about tyre modelling using the exponential function, in particular, tyre temperature sensitivity modelling using the exponential function. Now, this is one of these features that have sort of been buried in the back of chassis sim, and some people have played with it, but uh, other, uh, but a lot of people haven't. And really, it's a, I've put it in there as a tool to really help you really get a really good accurate picture of what's going on with um, tyre temperature modelling. And it's there really to um, help you take your tyre models to that next step of fidelity. So let's get started. Okay. Let's talk about the existing um, uh, uh, the existing paradigms we've got out there for uh, modeling the traction circle radius. And where particularly this is all going to fit in is modeling the traction circle radius. And you'll recall from some earlier tutorials I've done is that the traction circle radius, F prime max, can be basically a normalized function of temperature multiplied by a function of load. Now, that function of load is effectively a plot of tire force or traction circle radius versus load. What the normalized function t does is that basically multiply uh, is that's a function between that is scaled between zero and one that's effectively a function of temperature and this is really how we get um, the tire temperature sensitivity in there and that is effect and that uh, temperature and that temperature function that we're using or the temperature variable that we're using is effectively idealized so is idealized surface is idealized surface temperature now currently as you'll see we currently use a square approximation of uh, what uh, the uh, normalized function tire temperature looks like and to show you what that looks like this is basically what we've got uh, what we've got uh, what we've got it looking like what we've got here is we've got our function temperature which is scaled between 0 and 1 it hits its maximum value where we hit the optimum operating um, temperature of the tire and you'll see here we've got basically we divide this up into a pre which is what happens when the temperature is less than the uh, tire, uh, than the optimum tire temperature and we've got a post slope where the temperature is greater than the optimum tire temperature and as we can see we've got a square function that leads up to described by k pre and just going back to what we had before which is that that k pre is effectively that variable there and when we go beyond the temperature optimum we've got the we've uh, we've got our k post uh, kicking in now the thing about it is just going back to the uh, to our equation all of those uh, all of the temperature numbers are in kelvin and uh, k is uh, and k is effectively the uh, and k is effectively the a uh, uh, the um, a term in terms of what the square what the square function looks like. So for our parabolic function, y is equal to a x squared plus b x plus c. The k is effectively the a uh, the k is effectively the a bit. Now. The beauty about the square function is it's a really good simple start point and you've got to do something pretty silly to um, uh, trip yourself up. However, what happens when we're dealing with a tyre that exhibits all the hallmarks of something that's really, really, really tyre temperature sensitive? Enter the exponential function. Now, what we've got here is the beauty about exponential functions is because of their very nature, exponential functions really do take off pretty much like an F15 and full afterburner. So what we've got here is that um, uh, what we've got for our exponential tire temperature function is that we've got effectively a K exponential pre. Now what that means is this basically is the limit of which that normalized function is going to approach as the tire cools off. Once again, when we hit our temperature optimum, we hit a value of one. That's basically the temperature at which the tire is producing its maximum grip. And then as we um, go past it, eventually we die down to a value called k exponential post, and the shape of this and the shape of this curve is basically dictated by the values of k pre and k post. Effectively, the bigger these values are, the more of a curve that's going uh, the more of a curve that's um, uh, going uh, to uh, the, that's going to give you much more. That's going to the bigger those numbers are 
the more sensitivity you're going to get. And what's more, you can also turbocharge it by playing around with this temperature scale function as well. Now, the beauty about this formulation is it gives you sensitivity when you need it. And that really is the power of this exponential function. Now, mathematically, what it looks like is the following. We've got function t is equal to k multiplier plus 1 minus k multiplier e k t minus t optimum on t scale on, uh, on um, uh, uh, all, all squared up. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to figure out that at t is equal to t optimum, that k to, uh, uh, this square term drops to, uh, uh, that um, uh, square term drops to zero, and consequently, you've got our function t, um, uh, and you've got our function t equal to one. So for t less than t optimum, we've got um, k, which, uh, uh, which is this little puppy here, is given by k pre, and our k multiplier is k exponential pre. When, it's, when the, the surface temperature is greater than temperature optimum, we've got k is equal to k post, k multiplication, key exponential post. And what's more, you can also control what's going on here using um, T-scale as well to also aid, aid in the sensitivity as well. Now, let's kick off in some rough ballpark numbers to start with. Okay, for T-optimum, obviously, this is going to vary from car to car. I've got a value there of about 373.15 Kelvin or about 100 degrees Celsius. Look, rough rules of thumb, of, as I've discussed in other tutorials, it's typically about 30 to 40 degrees over what you're going to be getting in terms of your measured tyre temperatures as you come into uh, pit lane. Your K pre and your K post is about 4 and 6. Your K pre multiplication and your K post multiplication, that's about 0.7. K post multiplication is about 0.8. That makes sure that uh, the, the reason I've put to K, uh, uh, K post multiplication at 0.8 is just as a little bit of a safety as you really start to load off, uh, load up the tyre. And T scale is about 50 degrees Celsius. Now, rough rules of thumb, as we discussed before. Increasing K pre and K post and reducing T scale really increases the sensitivity. What it does is it makes this curve real. It makes that curve really, really sensitive around about the T optimum around the T optimum area. So as you're making setup changes, you're really going to see some big differences there. Also, too, if you are worried a little bit about what this is going to do, what I would suggest is you start off with conservative values of k exponential pre and k exponential post. So you'll set these pretty close to, to one rough rule of thumb about 0.8. That just makes sure that it's not going to go that it's not going to go it's not going to go massively stupid. Now. What's the mechanics of um, how we actually input this into chassis sim? That's actually pretty straightforward. How we input this in the chassis sim, you can do it in two ways. First things first, if you want to do it manually using the tire, uh, using the tire model quick start, all you've got to do is select function mode to exponential function. You put in your optimum tire temperature. You put in your values for your K and your uh, for your K and your pre, and for your advanced settings, you basically put your pre-scaling factor here at 0.7 and to put in our defaults as we discussed earlier, 0.8 and 50. I'll click on OK for that. I'll set that to about, I'll set that to a maximum of about 90 degrees C so we can see what's going on. And if I click on apply load settings with, the, uh, with these function values and I uh, click on OK, and if I go to max tire force properties, you can see my exponential, uh, you can see this is basically what my exponential function looks like. The other way that uh, you, uh, so that's the first way of how you would manually enter it in if you wanted to vary it manually, and that is a, that's available right through the chassis sim range, from chassis sim light right through the chassis sim elite. Now, in terms of how you'd incorporate this when you're doing, um, your t when you're running tire force modeling, once again, all you'd have to do is you select the exponential function, you set your defaults at 4, uh, four and four, and you enter your deltas accordingly. Rough rule of thumbs for the deltas. I find the values of about two actually work pretty well for me. Two and two, and I click on here for um, my advanced tire temperature settings, and once again, I'll put in my values for the front and the rear. So just filling in the defaults as we discussed 
for the, uh, as we discussed, for uh, the presentation uh, that uh, we'd uh, just uh, gone through. And once again, we put in our deltas, uh, we put in here our deltas as before. We click on OK, and we click on OK to run the tire temperature modeling. Now, just a word of uh, just a uh, uh, just a word of caution when you're running this. Bear in mind, it's going to take twice as long because we're optimizing twice as many variables. So, rough rules of thumb, I've done it for some V8 supercar models and I went from about a two-hour runtime to about, say, a three-and-a-half-hour runtime, albeit I'm running this on a pretty modest laptop. But the beauty about it is... Uh, uh, but the beauty, uh, uh, but uh, the beauty about this is that... What it does is, if you really have got a tire that's very, very, uh, that's a very, very sensitive creature, is it really gives you that extra? Uh, is it really gives you that extra step in how to modeling it? So I'll just give you some final thoughts. When you're kicking off um, with um, tire temp modeling, start on the square function. It's easy. It gives you some rough rules of thumb in terms of what. It gives you some rough, uh, 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 some rough steps in the dark in terms of a feel for where optimum tire temperatures uh, should be. And bottom line, if that's doing okay for the setup variables you're throwing into the model, leave it as is. However, if you really need that sensitivity, the, tire to, uh, uh, the exponential function is really your next step. So, so really, as I would, so to wrap things up here, what I'd really encourage you to do, have a look at this function shape and for those of you who are chassis sim users, you'll actually find this docu uh, documented in um, the um, chassis sim uh, in the PDF entitled csim uh, tire documentation .pdf in the help directory. And really, start playing around with these numbers of T optimum, K pre, K, uh, K post, K pre multiplication, K post multiplication, and your temperature scale. So throw some mud on the wall, and it, you're going to be amazed with what you learn in the process. So. I'll leave that thought. Um, I'll leave those thoughts with you, and we'll catch you again in uh, the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.